And the one thing about Notre Dame, we have a history arriving right to this occasion. We have a history and a tradition of playing exceptionally well when people really don't expect that to happen. On a perfect 70-degree Saturday in South Bend, this game would be one that would more than live up to its advance billing. A first-period pickoff by senior Duan Francisco and an emotional Chris Zorich stop sent a message to the visiting Hurricanes. But it was a forced fumble on the very first Miami possession that enabled veteran end Frank Stams to let Steve Walsh have a hint of the harassment he would face. Early in the game, I created a fumble. I think that set the tone for the rest of the game. I think they had went on to have six turnovers in the game. And I think that sort of set the tempo for our defense and uh, gave our offense good field position. The Irish struck hard and swiftly with a 22-yard completion to Ragib Ismail and a barreling 13-yard gain by Braxton Banks doing most of the damage. Quarterback Tony Rice did the rest. Again the double tight end, again the wishbone, just about 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. Here's Rice, five yards, does a goal by another touchdown. Tony Rice breaks the ball to the fullback, circle to the right, hits the spot at the five-yard line, and nobody touched him, and first into the end zone. The Irish throw 75 yards, hit 12 plays, and they take the lead 6 nothing. Much of the pregame quarterback conversation revolved around Walsh, but Rice let it be known that Walsh wasn't the only passer in the stadium. After Miami even the score at seven, Rice began an 80-yard drive with a 57-yard pass to Ismail and ended it with a nine-yard pass to wide open Banks to make it 14 to seven. Not to be outdone, Notre Dame's defense got into the scoring column four plays later as junior safety Pat Terrell shocked the Hurricane offense. We had a great rush by um, the whole defensive line including Frank Stams, and uh, Frank happened to get a tip or a hand on the ball, and it was up there, and I took it, and I raced down the sidelines, and I knew I had to get in the end zone. I couldn't let Steve Walsh catch me. Notre Dame's two-touchdown advantage left Jimmy Johnson perplexed, but not for long. Walsh even the score with a pair of touchdown passes in the last three minutes. The first on a fourth down and four call. The second capping a 54-yard Miami drive. But the artistry of the Hurricanes signal caller couldn't diminish the spirit of the Irish defenders. We were up 21-7, you know, with a couple minutes to go to half, and all of a sudden, bam, bam, and you know, it was tied. And I think that woke us up a little bit. And, 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 and made us see that we had to play that much harder in the second half. We decided in the secondary and on the defense that uh, no matter what happened, no matter how many yards they got, no matter how many uh, passes they completed, they wouldn't score enough touchdowns to beat us. Notre Dame's defense made good on its promises as Jeff Alm forced a turnover on Miami's very first play after the half. One possession later, after Steve Bellis halted the Hurricanes on a fake punt attempt, Rice struck again with deadly precision. This time on a first down 44-yard strike to Ricky Waters. The Irish made it 28 to 21 on the very next play. Double tight end, wishbone backfield. Tony Rice will take the snap, gives it to Eilers. Eilers is down to about the two touchdown. Pat Eilers for a score. A Reggie Ho field goal put Notre Dame up by 10 after three periods. Then Walsh went to work again, but the Irish forced a sixth turnover, this time on a hit at the one by George Streeter and a recovery by Stonebreaker. Miami came knocking at the door again on its next possession, but Stams canceled the threat himself. Miami was, you know, the number one team, and, uh, you know, for me personally, Steve Walsh had not been sacked uh, 
the whole year, so I knew that was a heck of a challenge for myself. The Hurricanes mounted a final attack, but the Irish stood their ground. First Streeter and then West Pritchett denied Miami's access to the end zone, forcing Walsh into a fourth and seven situation. On a final desperate attempt, the Hurricanes quarterback lofted a throw in the corner of the end zone to Andre Brown. It was only fitting that the game of the year would come down to a two-point conversion attempt in the final seconds. All week we, we knew that the, the game would come down to a play like this, so the feeling was actually relaxed and everyone knew what they had to do. And um, I think since we were confident, that's why we did come out you know, like we did. And um, everyone had their man locked down really good. And um, personally, I had a feeling he was coming to my man and um, made the play. The capacity crowd held its breath as the Irish defended their end zone one last time. Alley, the wingman on the right side, three wide receivers right. They're going to go for two. Back to throw. Walks, looks, looks, looks. Has the time. Lost the ball. The pass is set it down. It's set it on by Terrell. And the Irish may win it this afternoon. They're out in front 31 30 as Jimmy Johnson went for two. People had their minds set on Miami, and every play of the game was like the last play of their career. And uh, the emotion in the stadium, the emotion on the sidelines, uh, the camaraderie on the sidelines, you know, I'll never forget that. Uh, that. That's a thrill for me. Ironically, the night before the game, Lou Holtz had uncharacteristically promised an Irish victory. Well, we were in the locker room after the Pittsburgh when I said to the football team that we could beat the University of Miami, but there would be certain things that have to happen. Number one, they would have to believe in the spirit of Notre Dame. Number two, they'd have to believe in each other. Number three, they'd have to believe in the coaches. I was hoping to have a very, very positive week's practice. However, we'd lost both starting offensive guards against Pittsburgh, had to move two tackles in, and we couldn't have the type of week that I really expected. It wasn't very upbeat, it wasn't very positive, there was too much negative coaching out of necessity because of position switches, et cetera. So as I went to the pep rally and I stood up there, I just didn't feel real good, and yet I felt we were capable of winning. And I've never predicted we're going to do anything in my entire life. And I said that I felt we were going to win, and I said, and you go tell them I said so. I didn't feel that was going to fire Miami up because they didn't believe there was any way they could lose anyway. That they were always so very, very confident, which is always good in a football team. But I do think it helped our football team come to the realization that, hey, Coach Holtz does believe in it. But I also did not think that would make the news because I thought it was past the deadline. And when I got up the next morning and read that in the headlines, I thought, I did what? And Fortunately, our football team went out and backed that up. But once again, I think it all starts with a faith and a belief.